Mike, the first year I came here, this was all apricot trees as far as the eye could see. Okay. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Yanni, uh, and I'm doing a couple of shows. One of them is called Why Did the Chicken Cross the Line? That is at 3.40 at Stand 2, and another one is a free fringe show called Comedians Against Humanity, which is at Movement uh, at 7.30. Right, it's coming to the end of the run now. So, so how many shows do you have left? Do you know? I can count them on my hands. Is that uh, a nice feeling though? Oh, yes, of course it is. I mean, it's like coming to the end of a marathon and someone going, oh, does it feel good to be coming to the end of the marathon? <laughs> you go, yeah, yeah, it'll be good to put my foot up. I think um, the Free French Show finishes on Saturday, so I've got four more, and then the other one finishes on Sunday, so I've got five more. So total, nine more shows. That's not too bad. No. Nah. And how does it feel? Do you, is, it, is it like you get to the middle and then you hit a, like the wall? Is it like a marathon where you get to the middle and you're like, oh, I cannot do anymore? And then by the end, it's like you're just going on adrenaline or something. Well, well, I'm, I'm going to be making up the comparison to a marathon since I've never done one. But uh, yeah, no, it's totally like doing a marathon. Um, you know, I remember when I did the London Marathon and I was about uh, two thirds of the way through and I thought back to halfway through and I thought, yeah, you know, actually it's better being two thirds of the way through because you can see the finish line, you know. But that is a thing with Fringe, like, you know, in the second week, there's like so much of it to go that you go, I can't even think about the end, it's too far away. If I think about the end, it's like, I'll just, I'll probably get sick and my body will just give out on me and, and, and I'll just, nah, you've got to just eye of the time of that all the way and then in the last week you can kind of go all right cool I can see it I can reach for it and um, can you tell us maybe a creative way that you've ever got a freebie in Edinburgh in terms of like maybe beers maybe food you haven't just pulled the I am a performer car a uh, guy on Princess Street that I met at 3 a.m. Uh, when we both started chatting to a busker gave me a Yorkie bar the other night I didn't pay for that um, in terms of uh, your comedy routine, uh, do you think there's still subjects that are taboo in comedy at all? I know that's a little bit heavier than a chat about a Yorkie, but do you still think there's <laughs> like, uh, things that are taboo in comedy or subjects that you just want to touch? Well, is it, is, it more, is it more controversial than a chat about a Yorkie? I just uh, mentioned their advertising campaign, It's Not For Girls. That's a highly charged thing you know is that is that does that represent camera right now, is yeah it? exactly that. does that uh, does that represent engendered uh, entrenched gender stereotypes no I mean listen there's always because you're talking to people about whatever and you know and then it, it, uh, there's absolutely taboos I mean you just there are, there are words that you just mention like you know race-based words or you know Islam or you know anything like that and you just mention them and people they've got automatic responses that just kick in and so sometimes as a comic you've got to walk them through those things and that takes skill but also they need to trust you but also you need to know what you you need to have thought it through a bit and you need to know how people react and have a bit of an understanding of that but yeah, there's definitely things. Uh, but it's interesting, because like I'm doing the stand-up show, which is like obviously just stand-up. I've written the script, it's all well thought through. And then uh, my other show is co called Comedians Against Humanity, and that's all improvised. So it's three guest comedians, and they're improvised material based on things that come from Cards Against Humanity cards. So we've had some very questionable things that we've had to have people do, like, um, there's one thing we do is that we get a, we get we get the guest comedian to say you're going to be the head of a church right it's going to be the church of something what is it and someone had the card and said Auschwitz right and I said great let's do that right and then people and then he had to be head of the church of Auschwitz and sell it and the thing is because people know it's improvised and because people know that they they've been made to do this because that's the nature of the game the card gets played they're more forgiving right so and they will laugh at that sort of thing whereas if you came out and said I've scripted this whole thing about the Church of Auschwitz. People would be like, what are you talking about? That's a horrible thing to script. So it, so it shows that there are taboos, but people, it's almost like they're willing to laugh if they're allowed to laugh. Um, so from one heavy subject to another, um, who is your favourite ever Batman? <laughs> Um, it says a lot about person. Oh, my, I think my favourite ever Batman was my brother when he was five. We've got this amazing picture of like him jumping off in this Batman costume and it's so cute. And Christian Bale was almost that cute, but I don't think he quite pulled it off the way Steven did. I don't think he was going for the cute vibe. But... No, no. Yeah, my brother has this voice too. He's like, I'm Batman. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Cheers.